اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و بہی نستعین والصلاۃ والسلام على خیر خلق اللہ اب القاسم المصطفیٰ محمد وعلى اہل بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی فی کتابه الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم وما تشاؤون الا ان یشاء اللہ پلیز ریسائٹ الصلوات Respected listeners, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rafidi, kafir, mushrik. These are the three most common slurs that I get to receive on my social media posts. And there are others which I cannot tell you from the pulpit. Rafidi, Kafir, Mushrik. Well, the thing is, we are Rafidi, actually, because we have done Rafid. We have left behind those we believe, and this is the truth, that they hijacked the religion of Islam. So we have done Rafid, so we are Rafidi. We are also Kafir in a way, because we have done Kufr of Taghut. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ So we have done Kufr of Taghut, so we are also Kafir in that sense. But Mushrik? No way. Not in any possible way could we be considered Mushrik. And these allegations quite often almost always come from those Tech theory people whose own ideology, whose own concept of Tawheed is laden with shirk. Laden with shirk. And I'm not Tech theory. We are not Tech theory. I'm not talking about explicit shirk. I'm not talking about shirk jali, but laden with shirk khafi. Implicit shirk, traces of shirk in different aspects of Tawheed. As a matter of fact, a vast majority of Muslims today believe in a God who has emotions, who is a personal God, a sort of human-like God, who has emotions, who becomes happy, who becomes angry, someone who sits on a throne on something called Arsh, Someone we will be able to see in the hereafter. And some Muslims believe that we can see God in dreams. And I can understand that throughout the history, human beings have been longing for a personal God. Someone who is like them. And I can also understand that in our pursuit of loving God, we tend to take God as someone more human than he actually is. Some personal sort of God. It can be okay on individual level, but to develop a whole theology around it and build a whole theology around it, that is very, very problematic. And today... The theology on which the vast majority of Muslims' beliefs are based is the theology of Asha'irah. And the Asha'irah built up this theology in which God can be seen, God's Zat and Sifat are separate. And this is what I'm going to talk about in a later lecture next week, inshallah. And also a God who is so Jabir that we don't have any free will and all our Af'al are basically... All our actions are basically the actions of God. This is the theology upon which is based the belief of a vast majority of Muslims today and they call us Mushrik. It is such a great pity that such a beautiful religion of Islam when it was hijacked 
and then it was transmitted by those who used to say Lawla Alijun la halak afulan. And that's what happened. This is such a shame, such a pity. But you know what is a greater pity? What is a greater shame? That those who believe in Ali ibn Abi Talib, those who claim to believe in Mawla al-Muwahhideen, the guardian of the monotheists, we, from our pulpits and in our congregations, Tawheed is the least discussed subject. This is a greater pity. So I am honored and I'm very happy that this program has been organized and I'm honored that I have been given the opportunity to talk about Tawheed and I have deliberately selected the topic, the purest Tawheed which we have but we need to learn about it. And this is going to be uh, this lecture today and the lecture next Thursday inshallah. In the next lecture, I will talk more about the divine, the nature of the divine, what is God and who is God, and I'll do so in light of Surah Al-Ikhlas, inshallah. So make sure you don't miss the next lecture. But what I'm going to do today, because I have now about 15, 14 minutes left, and, and this is going to be the prelude to the Q&A session that we have afterwards. So in the next 12, 13 minutes or so, what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to focus on the very basic relationship between the creator and his creation. The very basics, the very, very basics. And that is going to lay the foundations for the rest of the, the evening and Q&A session. And in doing so, I'll also touch upon the subject of whether we have free will and what about our actions if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined everything from uh, beforehand. So this is what I'm going to do. And without wasting any more time, uh, I'm going to start with a mental exercise. Now, this is a mental exercise that I have developed and I conduct it in different congregations and mosques. And I did conduct it here also two years ago, but in a pre-recorded online lecture. It was a long time ago and it is not the same as an in-person exercise. So let's, let's do this exercise and inshallah this is going to help you uh, understand uh, many things concepts related to Tawheed and inshallah also help you solve some of your dilemmas or many of your dilemmas related to Tawheed if you might have. So please follow my instructions and close your eyes. Everyone close, everybody close your eyes. Now imagine a jungle and in that jungle there is a stream of water. Next to that stream of water stands a lion. This is your lion. You are the creator of this lion. So give it the features you want it to have. Maybe thick, shiny hair around its neck, maybe a long curved tail. This lion now looks towards its right and then towards its left. Now open your eyes and please recite a salawat. <clears throat> I see, there is no football match today, is there? No, no, so this is good. Otherwise, my mind would be occupied with, <laughs> with that as well, you know. And this World Cup has been quite different. Uh, so many upsets, quite special, despite all the negativity uh, in the mainstream media about the World Cup and all that. But now I have a question. What is your lion doing now? Is it? Exactly. It does not exist. While it might have appeared in your mind as soon as I said the word lion, maybe it appeared again in your mind, but you see, I, I deliberately, 
asked you to recite a salawat and then started talking about football, deliberately something irrelevant so that you completely forget about the lion and, and focus on football, which is very easy anyway nowadays. So what happened is that as soon as you opened your eyes, the lion ceased to exist. It became ma'dum, non-existent. You see, what you are to your lion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to the whole creation. And to create anything and everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not more than just a simple thought. And if he took his thought away, everything will cease to exist, disappear. La sinatum wa la nawm. In the Ayatul Kursi, he does not doze off or sleep because he's all the time keeping everyone sustained. You are hay, so you gave hayat to that lion. You have life, you are alive, you gave life to that lion. You are a qa'im, you, you, you sustain your existence. You became a qayyum for that lion. You are hay and qayyum to that lion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hay and al-qayyum for everything. This lion simply cannot exist without you in any, any possible way. It is faqir ilayk. It is faqir ilayk. It is absolutely and constantly in need of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghanijul hamid. O mankind, an-nas, all mankind, the holy prophet, the amirul mu'mineen, of the 14 infallibles, everyone, faqir il fuqara ila Allah. Always in constant need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the ma'asumin used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, do not leave us on our own, even for the blink of an eye. That was their ma'rifah. What else? This lion example. You see, we have limited time and these lectures are just the starter appetizer. The five course meals you have to cook yourself at home through reading, through reflection, and through discussions. You have to do it yourself. I can only give sauce and some appetizer. This lion, wherever it goes, you are with it. It can never, ever, ever get out of your kingdom. Never, ever. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ And he's with you wherever you may be. So you are like God to that line. If you were qa'im bidatik, if you were self-sustaining, you would be God. This lion is a qa'im bidati ghayrihi. This lion sustains, is, is, exists, but with the that of someone else, that is you. And the one who is a qa'im bidhat, he's self-sustaining, that is God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we can go on and on and on, but I want to quickly make one more point because I have six minutes left out of which I will spend four on, on this topic and then two on, on eulogy. And then we'll continue the discussion in the q and I'm just opening the, 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 the topic, introducing the topic. Now, this line will say, okay, thought it's, it seems like completely, um, totally dependent on you, but also can't do anything on its own will. It has no free will. I mean, you are telling it to look towards the right, towards its left, and so on. But okay, in your fantasy, give free will to this lion. Just try, it's difficult to imagine. Just give it the free will to go on and attack a flock of deers and tear them apart and and uh, maybe create more deers, whatever. Even if it has a free will, its free will shall still remain a part of your will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah." You cannot even want until Allah wants something. 
So is this jabr? It means that everything is forced upon us. Here, Allama Taba Tabai Rahmatullahi Alayhi has explained very beautifully. He says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has connected your will with His will, not your action with His will. Not your action. We will discuss this in the Q and A session. Whatever we do, it is Allah's will that we take actions out of free will. And wherever we are, and every day, we take so many hundreds of decisions. There is always something we can do or we cannot do. It's my decision. It's my free will. I can stand up here. I, I stood up. I showed. It's my free will. Looks so bad. Just standing up on the pulpit, but I did. Looks like, oh, this speaker has no etiquette, but I wanted to show. It's my free will. It was my choice. Okay, now it's my choice. I don't want to stand up. I don't. So every day, we have the choice. Drink water? Okay, should I drink water or not? Okay, I don't drink water. They say, ulama say that this that we think, should I do this or should I not do this, is a proof that you have the free will and you are responsible for your actions. But those people who took religion from the oppressors, they promoted this idea that Allah is to blame for anything and everything, all the atrocities. Allah is to blame. And that is why when Sayyid al-Sajideen and Lady Zainab alayha, they were brought when they were brought to the most accursed man on the face of the earth Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad what did he say? you know I just said it Zainab was brought to the court of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad I said it, you heard it and I just moved on. But there was a Rawza Khan, a, a, a Zakir. He said this sentence in front of an, a Marja. And he said, stop here. Stop here. Don't recite any further. Let me cry. And then he kept on crying. Then he said, don't recite any further. Let me cry more because I haven't done justice to this sentence. Zainab was brought to the court of Ibn Ziyad. And then, what did he say? He first said to her, to, to Sayyida Zainab, Allah has disgraced you. Jabriya aqidah. That aqidah, blaming it on Allah. Then he said to Sayyida Sajadeen, what's your name? Sayyida Sajadeen said, my name is Ali. This accursed man said, wasn't Ali killed in the battlefield? Referring to Ali al-Akbar. Sayyid al-Sajideen said, yes, he was my brother, but I am also Ali. This accursed man said, Allah killed your brother. Again, that false aqidah, blaming it on Allah. At that moment, Sayyid al-Sajideen, the muwahid, he said, no. Allah takes the souls at the time of death, but it was the soldiers, your soldiers, who killed my brother. Don't blame it on Allah. They killed Ali al-Akbar, who looked like the Holy Prophet the most. But you know who else looked the most like the Holy Prophet before that? Our Lady. Some narrations say that our lady, Fatima to bid'atum minni, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, she walked like the Holy Prophet and she spoke like the Holy Prophet and everyone recognized her in Medina. And yet, the usurpers of Khilafah, the usurpers of Islam, the hijackers of Islam, what did they do to her? According to some narrations, for 40 days, for 40 days consecutively, the Amir al Mu'mineen would help Sayyida Fatima to Zahra, alayha, prepare her and to go out and speak to people. 
Remind them of Ghadir. Remind them of Tawheed. What they would do? They would slam their doors into her face. And if it was only this, they also came to her door. And there was a time when our mother, when they set the door of Fatima to Zahra on fire, and she stood behind the door. Allah lahnatullahi ala al-qawmi al-walimeen. Rabbana wa lamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana nakunanna min al-khasirin. Allah masalli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjal farajah wa ala ahdahim ajma'in. We can now have uh, the Q&A session and uh, we can further discuss what I just introduced. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you to Sayyid for a, a beautiful, beautiful lecture. And alhamdulillah, we now have the opportunity to ask him any questions we may have about the lecture. Um, so the format of this is we'll have a short 25, 30 minute Q&A session. Um, there's a mic here on the gent side if anyone would like to speak up and ask any questions. Similar on the ladies side. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll start on the gent side. If there's any questions, we'll, answer, we'll ask them. And if not, we'll go straight to the ladies side and take any questions from there. Um, you'll see on the slides, there's also a, a Slido link. So if anyone would like to ask their questions anonymously, you can do so by submitting them to that link and then I can pull them up and ask them directly to say it. Um, so if, if you would like to begin, if anyone has any questions at the gen side, please just raise your hand and we'll bring the mic. Thank you. Wa alaikum as um, Just because it's still fresh in mind, so can you explain the, uh, the action and uh, how it's linked? Because Allah's is will is connected to us and how the action is work. So it's very fresh. Okay, we can elaborate um, on. So there is this um, verse in the Quran. I think, uh, could you please lift the chair? Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> There's this verse that ulama often um, discuss when discussing this, this topic, qaza and qadr and free will, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَا So it refers to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam shooting an arrow, or they also say that it's like throwing pebbles towards uh, the disbelievers. Regardless of what it is, you, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ You did not throw it or shoot it. إِذَا رَمَيْتَ When you shot it. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى But Allah shot it. So now there are three denominators here. وَمَا رَمَيْتَ You did not throw it. Second is إِذَا رَمَيْتَ When you threw it, so you threw it. Third, but Allah through it. Now, on the basis of these three denominators, we can make two equations. Are you with me? It's, it's becoming a little bit technical, but the subject is also a little bit complex and, and technical. So let's, let's get through this. So, oh, sorry. Um, so the first equation, you did not throw it. When you threw it, you did not actually throw it when you threw it. Equation number two. When you threw it, but Allah threw it. So you make two equations out of these three denominators. And that solves the issue to a certain degree because it is still quite complex. So what we learn from this is that when we perform these actions, we actually do these. We do these uh, things on one hand. But it is basically through the power of Allah through the will of Allah, through the help of Allah, that we perform these actions. Um, in another word, in, uh, sorry, in other words, we are not sharik with Allah in any of his actions, but he is a sharik with us in all our actions. Sharik with his power. Bihawlillahi wa quwwatihi it is with the power of Allah that all my actions, all my movements, standing up and sitting down is with the power of Allah. Now you are sitting down. So it's your choice. You stand up 
or sit down <laughs> like I did that thing, <laughs> silly <laughs> move, if some of you might find it. But it's, it's our choice to stand up or sit down, but it's with the, with the power of Allah. And again, I was having this uh, discussion just before I came, started driving to, to stand more. I had a chat with uh, one of my teachers, and he said that uh, Agha uh, Bajat also used to give this example, uh, that our irada, our will, is connected to the will of Allah. It's a part, it's the irada of Allah that we perform actions with our own irada. It's the will of Allah that we perform our actions with free will. So, so this is a rather simple and simplistic explanation of, of this. This subject is pretty heavy. <laughs> so, for everyone. <laughs> Uh, once a guy, let me add, sorry. Once a man came and asked this question from the Amir al Mu'minin, and the Amir al Mu'minin said, Do not get into this. This is a dark valley. You'll become a halak. Qada and Qadr. It is so, so it's. Even if those people who really understand it, they, they cannot fully explain it in the languages of this world. But we can have a certain understanding, as, uh, as I said, uh, at the end of the day, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us what is good, what is bad. Everybody knows that. And when we feel bad after having done something bad, this is a proof that we have done this. We are responsible for that, that action. Asant. Um, I, th I think we will end up having a lot of questions on this topic, so... Yeah, please go ahead, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Um, if there's any sisters who have a question uh, on the mic, please do speak now. Sorry, no questions from the ladies. I don't know if it's gone off. Questions. Um, does anyone in the gents have a question? Yes. There's one at the back. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum um, assalam wa rahmatullah. So, Sayyid, just so I get the understanding right, um, we talked about the actions and the will of Allah being in the action. I'll just finish uh, the sentence. So what we're saying maybe is, again I'm trying to get my understanding correct, is that the action is our irada, but that power that comes with for the bad action, I'm just talking about the bad action, the good actions is always good anyway. But the bad action is my irada, but the force that drives it is Allah's irada. Is that right? Is that Would that be a right assumption to make? Um. So that being a free will, then I am responsible for that. Yes. Let's get back to the, yes. Uh, yeah, that was, that's, this is one way of putting it, I think. Um, let's, <laughs> no, you don't smile. <laughs> um, this, no, you, as, as this is, a, this is, I've got myself into trouble by, by talking about this, but I'm very happy to be uh, in this trouble. It was my free will. <laughs> So, um, the lion, getting back to the lion. So, you created that lion. And um, if, uh, if you close your eyes and you, it's difficult, but you give it the free will, then you are powering its free will. You, you're powering if I could uh, explain it. It's... If, I, if you created this lion and um, I looked at your lion completely ignoring you, would it make sense? If I just, you know, if I just imagine that I could uh, look inside your mind and 
I thought, okay, I'm gonna look at the free will of his lion. He's, it is creating deers, it's killing deers, doing this and that. Um, but you don't exist. I, I, just, I just look at the, the lion itself and its free will. Would it make any sense? No, because it is like non-existent. I simply cannot separate you from your lion. You are with it in all possible ways, even when it is exercising its free will. It is just part of your will, your plan, your design. And in the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is his eternal design. And all these examples are weak and imperfect examples, you know, uh, because, because they are, we are trying to explain something that is unlimited and beyond our aql. And so how can limited beings really explain the unlimited entity or being? So these are only for what we call technically taqrib dhani like just to get some understandings, getting somewhat closer to the real understanding, but we can never fully, truly explain the relationship between the unlimited entity and the limited beings. Yeah, he gave us, he gave you the power, he gives us the power, we can't, but we still we can't blame him because he said that I'm giving you the power but I'm going to test you. He has told throughout the Quran and through his messengers, that's why he has sent, first of all he has given us this aql which is rasul e batini uh, in, you know, interior messenger, that, that, that conscience that keeps telling us that, uh, oh, you know, when we start to gossip, ghibat, we usually start the sentence, this is not ghibat, but. Yeah. Whenever someone starts, I say, I got it. If you didn't say this, I would say, yeah, this is not ghibat, but now this is ghibat. So this is your conscience telling you that don't do this. And once you have done that ghibat or anything else, something is bad, you feel bad, we feel bad. And that is the proof that we are responsible for our actions. Um, we've got a couple of questions on Slido and then we can come back to uh, the crowd. Um, so I, sim similarly, and I think you have just touched on it, but just to directly answer this question that's come up, how do I reconcile free will with Allah being all-knowing and knowing everything that I'm going to do? And I think... In your lecture, you did briefly touch on predetermination versus free will. Yes. So if you wouldn't mind expanding on that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, so it is in the... So it, it will always get back to pretty much the same thing, but telling in different, from different perspectives. But this is a very good question because there is this um, Farsi couplet and... And um, I don't know, they say Omar Khayyam said that, but they say that it's, uh, it has been attributed to Omar Khayyam because he was a refined poet and some people believe that he was uh, an Arif and stuff like that. But uh, someone else said, and he said that, let me drink wine. And because <laughs> Allah knew since uh, uh, the eternity uh, that I was going to drink wine. And uh, if I don't drink wine, ilm khuda jahal shawad. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if I don't drink, ilm khuda will be proven wrong, the, the knowledge of God. So let me drink. So um, this, is, um, this is quite often discussed. This is not like that. Yes, he knows that. But again, he has given us the free will. Um, I'll get back to the lion example again. When we give, um, just imagine, and, and I would encourage, rather request all of you to Try and do this. Do, do some reflection at home or with some friends or family. Try and, but don't do too much because this can be really mind bog boggling. But if you can do this kind of exercise or do this exercise again. Um, if we try to give free will to any of our creatures, even then on a certain level, 
we know that what it is going to do out of free will. You, you, yeah, you, you somehow know that out of... Of, And why I give, the, give these examples? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَجَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Soon we shall show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves. And my understanding and my point of view is that one of the signs he has put inside us are these fantasies and imaginations with the help of which we can recognize God and his relationship with, with us and with his creatures. So when we give this free will to our lion, even then we somehow know beforehand what it's going to do out of its free will, but that does not make it off the hook. If that, this was a long answer to a short question, and when one does not know a good answer, usually the answers are long. So... <laughs> You have a question here? Um. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask about this. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask about the ayah that you mentioned in the lecture, uh, the one ma'ata sha'una illa insha'Allah. So from obviously, I understand from a secondary perspective, it applies to everybody. Um, from what I've read or from what I've heard is that primarily, of course, it refers to the Ahl Bayt and the Ahl Bayt, they even quote this as one of their fadail that la uh, nasha'u illa insha'Allah or idha shi'na sha'Allah or idha sha'Allah shi'na and this fadl, the Ahl Bayt kind of, it seems that they specify it for themselves. So what I wanted to understand is that when Allah says this to us, what is the difference between the, the, when we're talking about it primarily for the Ahlul Bayt and when we're talking about it for us? Beautiful question. Okay, sorry. A beautiful question. Uh, really, um, I like it. Um, yes, we, it has both meanings. Uh, one is like for, for every being that you can't even want unless Allah wants it. And the other is specifically for the Ahlul Bayt that, uh, that they do what Allah wants in a way like their irada is um, or their mashiach here is the word is yasha so it is mashijah uh, jureed and yasha are different but I'm not getting there but keep it simple uh, will so sim we can have a simple translation of irada and mashiach as well for the time being so uh, their will is diffused into the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what's the difference is that we have to understand that there is this uh, the taqweeni will of Allah and then it's the shari'i will of Allah. Now the taqweeni will of Allah is that which is takhalluf um, na um, So it is um, um, unchangeable. So, so taqweeni will of Allah is for example uh, the universal laws of physics or or, or um, it's the will of Allah that, that human beings are going to inhale oxygen and exhale CO2 for example, or, or other things, or you and I will be, you are born in such a, such a such family and I'm born in such family, so and so, and this country, that country. This is the irada of taqweeni of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt, it is the tashri'i irada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the tashri'i irada? Which is that we have the free will to act upon it or not. And a ma'asum is one who under the influence of the perfect aql, the perfect aql does not do anything that is not the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though they have the free will. Let me give the example. The, the uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the way to Karbala dreamed. <coughs> And someone asked uh, the Imam, why are you going there? Why couldn't you go back? Something like that. The Imam said, I have dreamed just now. And the Holy Prophet told me, or if I, if I may paraphrase, the gist of it is that Allah wants that I be killed. And then they said, so 
uh, why are you bringing women and children with you? The Imam continued. The Imam said, Allah wants that they become sabaya. They become uh, the prisoners of war. Allah wants. Here he had the free will. Here. وَمَا يَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ الله Could, may, possibly be mean that. I wouldn't say, you know, one has to be very careful. احتمال is that there is a likelihood that this can be applied to this uh, episode. So he still could back off, but he said, no, it's the will of Allah that I should. It's the will of Allah that you and I should all, we all should pray. Five times a day, but we don't. I mean, Alhamdulillah, most of us do, but sometimes we don't. So, but in the case of Masumin, they always do. Um, if there are any questions on the ladies' side, um, do feel free to speak up. Okay, if no questions, then we'll ask um, a couple from the Slido. Um, so there's one here which says, how do you explain um, something is Allah's will when we pray and wish for something and it didn't come true? So I think what they're trying to get at is, if you're asking for something that you think is beneficial for you, is it Allah's will that he's just not given you that? Um, <coughs> yeah, could I read the question just... Not, yeah, you have explained, but it's just, I thought, I'm just buying some time. Pray and wish for something I didn't answer. Yeah, so it's Allah's will that he does not want to give you that thing, which uh, you think is beneficial. Um, for example, um, so... It's related to his ilm and his wisdom, his knowledge and his wisdom. So he he knows that this thing is not good for you, and uh, yeah, I I don't really uh, understand the question that well. So well related to. So if you could. So I think yeah, may maybe if the the person who uh, put the question in maybe wants to expand a bit, but I, I I think what it's getting as is if if for example you truly believe something is good for you and you're asking for it, mm. in this context of what you're talking about, everything is God's will, every minute detail is God's will. Oh. He's specifically withholding something from you. How do you then, I suppose, rationalize that if? I don't right, know, you truly right. think it's beneficial for you. Yes. So it is like you, for example, wanted to study engineering or dentistry or medicine or something, and you, or you wanted a certain job and you tried hard for it and you also prayed and you did, um, made nazar for ziyara and this and that, and it was your will uh, and wish and will. Uh, but Allah's will was that uh, instead of becoming a doctor, uh, you would uh, become something else, engineer or a, you know, accountant. If yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, accountant or, or um, psychologist. So, uh, for example, example. Uh, so it, it was His will. So what's the point? What's the point that you studied and you did all those things? Um, it, probably this is the, yeah. So in that case, yeah, he it was as well, and it was it was his knowledge. Interestingly, I came across this question recently, uh, and um, and uh, what I understand is that here it is it is it is in his knowledge that still you will become an accountant out of your free will in the end. Because as I said, we always, whatever we do, we do out of free will. Here, uh, you know the, the, the concept of ra rational choice theory. Some political science scientists would know. And the concept of rationality in, in political science. The rationality tells us, it's not like in colloquial terms when you say, oh, it's rational to do, in rational, uh, this is not rational to do. In our life, throughout our lives, rationality, 
the, 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 the definition of it is that whenever we are faced with a dilemma or any decision we have to take, we, we consider all the possible options and then pick the best one. And on the basis of this definition, rationality, a suicide bomber is a rational being. A suicide bomber is a rational person because his objective, his or her, because we want to be, we don't want to be sounding misogynistic, so it can be his or her, or, th or their objective is to create the most uh, mayhem and, and, and terrorize the people. So they are going to uh, pick the, evaluate all the available options and pick one. And this rationality basically applies to all our actions and all our lives. We are always looking for the best available option. So even though you wanted to become a teacher or a doctor, but in the end you chose, no matter how uh, reluctantly, to become something else out of your free will which was in the eternal ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were going to do out of your free will. And I guess just sort of on that, we've got another question here, which is in the context of everything you've just said, what does it truly then mean to sin? Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> sin is we do something under the influence of shaitan or nafsul ammara and when we do it we feel bad about it and as i said when we feel bad about it this is a proof or the proof that we are responsible for our uh, action for our sin which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that we were going to do. And, but he's not going to stop us because he has, he's not going to force anyone to, to, to not do that. But one thing is very important to understand. There's this fine line. Like the Mu'tazila, which is also like the mainstream Muslims, the vast majority of Muslims, the Sunni Muslims, have basically two, two theologies, Ashaira and Mu'tazila. And Mu'tazila pretty much are non-existent now, but they ca could be people who are in their personal capacity as Mu'tazila and individuals. They believe that once Allah has created us, uh, he has given us the complete free will so that our actions are not really linked with his will if I may cr crudely put it this way. So we're absolutely free. That is really, really very wrong. That's, that's really shirk, basically. So you, you, we can't, be, that, that's pretty much shirk. And then the Ashaira, which is like 90% like or so of, of, of the Muslims today, their theology is based on that. They say that we are not mukhtar, we are majboor in all our actions. Now again, there could be Sunni Muslims who in their individual capacity believe otherwise, but the theology says this, and that is also completely wrong. Um, I think we are, we are running out of time. If there's any final questions in the gents, then please do raise your hand now. Uh, yeah, one last question here. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. Wa alaikum as salam. Um, I've got something different questions, basically, something different view. Um, you said in Madlis that uh, Allah is responsible in His will when you, when the soul pass, soul is taken from the body. In, I mean, you just explained the, the, in the Messiah, yeah? Uh, yes. yes, Allah takes the soul. soul. Yeah, so that is his will. Yes. Basically. That's not human's will, right? No. That's so, his will, yes. ultimate will to take out. Yeah. So in the <clears throat> in the circumstances of somebody taking his own life. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And and also in other areas things that we understand a certain time of the year in uh, when we do amals or something else where we are given mm -hmm. our life is prolonged. 
Mm. Yeah. Yes. So then the will of Allah is at that particular time, but the life is then prolonged. So that's the will of Allah again. So that's fine. But on person taking his own life, yes. then how do you just explain that? Right. So let me start with the second one. So it's, it's like when the life is prolonged, it's not like the will of Allah changes. Um, because this prolongation of life, because there are two types of death, ajal muwaqqat and ajal musamma in the terms of the Qur'an. So, um, so this life prolongation as a result of sadaqa or salatu raham and good deeds, um, this is related to the not the eternal not the eternal knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is in uh, which which mahfuz is a reflection of lawh mahfuz is limited it's a separate subject but just briefly touching upon it the eternal ilm of allah is unlimited and allah is unlimited so allah is ilm on a on a higher level i'll i'll talk about this higher levels and stuff in the next lecture inshallah when you talk about ahad and wahid and stuff inshallah but so that is but then law mahfuz is still limited uh, it's a reflection of allah's eternal ilm, ilm and in that is this ajale musamma and and the 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 final death you know after the prolongations and stuff but then there is another law that is law mahwa wa athbat that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran yamhullahu ma yasha wa yuthbit wa indahu ilmul kitab so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, erases whatever he wants and sabt and, and makes it firm. And with him is the ilm al-kitab, uh, the, the lawh mahfuz that's the eternal ilm. On the basis of that, those changes occur. So when uh, we do a'mal in uh, Laylatul Qadr and those things, so things are moving around in lawhi mahwa wa athbat, the changeable disk, not the encrypted disk, which is the mahfuz. That does not change. So if I could, so it's, it happens on a, these changes and prolongations change on a, on a lower level. Not in the eter eternal realm of Allah is constant. Um, so about the suicide, again, a um, very sensitive topic, and I'm not talking, of course, we are not discussing why it happens and all that. And um, it, at the end of the day, it is also one's decision. Free will. I, as I said, it's very sensitive. Some people are suffering from such a such a depression and uh, conditions that they don't even know what they are doing. Um, so, so I want to be very careful here. But, but, but in very general terms, crudely put, at the end of the day, it is still a free, free will uh, to take, God forbid, if someone decides to take their life. And... Uh, it's in the eternal realm of Allah that that's going to happen and then he takes the soul at that time. So, I, I hope this answers your question. Yeah, Thank you. Ahsan, and thank you very much, Sayed, for those uh, enlightening answers. We do have uh, quite a few more questions, so inshallah, another day, we can maybe do another Q&A with you, uh, inshallah. Um, but yeah, I think that's the end for the Q&A. Inshallah, we'll have ziyara. Inshallah. <coughs>